Thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar on Rakuten Japan that is part of our e-commerce and digital marketing series. This webinar is brought to you by Innovate Hawaii, part of the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation. HTDC is a state agency attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, whose mission is to grow the tech economy and workforce in Hawaii. Innovate Hawaii is the state's NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership Center, which supports small and medium-sized manufacturers to enhance their productivity, growth, and technical performance through programs and services across the islands. My name is Nicole, and I'm a project engineer here at HTDC Innovate Hawaii. Some housekeeping things before we dive into the webinar. This session will be recorded and will be sent to everyone who registered. We're already in webinar mode, so your cameras and microphones should be muted. And feel free to send in your questions during, during the session through the Q&A function, and we will address them during the Q&A portion of the webinar. And we will also be sharing the slides you see via email after the session today, so don't be too worried about taking all the notes down. Today, Takaho Iwasaki, founder and CEO of Maji Connection, will moderate today's webinar on Rock. After working at one of the biggest Japanese media companies, Fuji Television Network in Tokyo, Takaho decided to diversify her business skills internationally while getting her MBA at the University of Hawaii. After graduating, she established Maji Connection to help Japanese startups to expand their business to the US market through Hawaii's market, and also Hawaii startups to connect with Japanese investors and corporate partners to expand their business to Japan for her unique business connections. She's also a founder of Island Innovation Demo Day, which introduces Hawaii startups to Japanese investors, corporations, and the market. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Takaho to take the lead for today's session. Hi, Nicole. Thank you very Hi. much for your introduction. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar today. Uh, this is, will be the last webinar for the series of the Expansive Trip Japan webinar. Today, I'm honored to introduce Takumi Kawashima from a Kyoko Trading Company and assistant speaker Rina Ikeda, who recently selected as a Magasaki City Council member. Although they are not working, uh, they are diff working in different fields right now, uh, but the, both of them have an amazing experiences working in Rakuten domestically and in, uh, globally. And they are happy to share their deep knowledge and experts with Hawaii. Please welcome Takumi as a speaker. Takumi-san. Hi. Hi. Thank you very yes. much. Are you Absolutely. ready for the webinar? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the intro. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Takumi Kawashima. I'll be introducing to you focusing on one topic, how to win in e-commerce. Um, the reason why my topic is not centered around selling to Japan is because the fundamental principles on selling online is universal. At the eyes of the, oh, sorry, at the eyes of the customer, what region you're selling from doesn't really matter. Um, when you're starting to sell in Japan, you're going to be competing with Japanese sellers and manufacturers. Um, this is why I'm going to be focusing on the fundamental strategies on selling on e-commerce um, so your product has a better chance of succeeding in penetrating the Japanese market. Um, I hope this seminar would guide you with the first steps if you're new to e-commerce, and hopefully you can learn at least one thing if you're um, an expert. So let me show you my slides. So I'm going to uh, start with my uh, quick self-introduction. Um, I was asked to lead the seminar due to my background on e-commerce as an e-commerce expert and consultant who worked at uh, Rakuten Inc. Um, at Rakuten Japan, I was involved in two main roles, uh, merchant development department and also e-commerce consultant. So at my first role, my main job was to recruit new potential customers, uh, com companies to enter Rakuten and was also overseeing the first year GMB. My partners slash clients uh, ranged from a small store in the outskirts of Osaka to huge corporations that were market leaders in the industry. So on 2016, my uh, client's total first year GMV was ranked first out of uh, around 200 colleagues. <clears throat> um, from there, I went to uh, Silicon Valley to work at our US headquarters uh, for Rakuten. 
um, at Racton.com. Uh, my main role was to start a new businesses, um, new intercompany re relationships, and was uh, involved in alliance with the Japanese government to increase export from Japan. Um, after I came back to Japan, I was allocated to be a consultant in the electronics category, where I spent time creating e-commerce uh, strategies for around 100 companies, um, including top players in the electronics category like Lenovo. Uh, after that, I've actually left Racton this year to prepare um, to inherit my family business. And I've already increased our company GMV at around 20% this half year, um, including a startup of our new e-commerce business, creating a new business plan, um, aiding in the startup of this new business, and also leading digital transformation within our very old uh, company. <laughs> so I consider myself an expert in e-commerce and also starting up new businesses. So I hope I can share a little bit of my experience and knowledge today um, to you, to everyone. Um, so jumping into our main topic, how do you win in e-commerce? Um, I will start with just three things you should be focusing on. That is the quality of product, the quality of service, and marketing strategy. Um, simple as that. As long as you get these three down, uh, I guarantee your sales will be improving. Um, however, as a consultant, I will tell you that these qualitative improvements cannot be assessed without numbers and data. Um, therefore, the most important and basic formula I would recommend you to focus on for sales would be traffic times conversion rate times um, AOV, average order value. Um, it's basically a formula that you can multiply the number of people coming into your shop, what percentage of them bought your items, and their average value of their shopping cart, which equals sales. Um, there are mul multiple ways you can dig down into these numbers to assess your strategy on the right. Um, for example, uh, these are just a few formulas I use all, all the time. Um, a formula I would recommend, uh, definitely recommend you to use would be return on ad spending. It's this one, uh, which is just ad spend, ad sales divided by ad spending. Um, you're going to be getting results like 200% if you spent 10K to get an extra sales of 20K. Um, the one thing you want to be careful is not to be profitable just from ad spending. Um, if there are more people buying from your store through advertisement, naturally your customers from searches outside of advertisement should increase as well. Um, a, a good analogy would be, um, ask yourself, would you rather buy at a store that has tons of people lining up outside or a store that looks brand new, but you see no customers inside? Um, the, the mechanics on e-commerce in the background will be, as long as you can create substantial sales from advertisements, um, your item would be flagged by search engine algorithm as popular or hot. So as a result, um, they would start tra driving traffic. The algorithms themselves would be driving traffic to your product. So backtracking a little bit, you should not just be looking at return on advertisement spending, but also LTV, lifetime value, um, which is how much each customer would be spending at your store through their lifetime. And compare that with CPA, um, cost per acquisition, um, to see if you're at least breaking even uh, from a single advertisement. Um, keep fueling your store with enough marketing without going red and you should be growing your sales. Um, I'm also going to introduce you one last basic rule before we start deep diving, uh, which is keep improving. Um, there's a Japanese saying that I like, um, even a dust, if it piles up, makes a mountain. So there's one tool that I would like to introduce to you, which should help you in this process which is this, the PDCA cycle. Um, once again, a very basic framework for improving any, anything business related, which is plan, create a plan to achieve your goal, do, put the plan into action, check your results and analyze, and from those results, devise actions that can improve your result and immediately act on it. So this is the PDCA cycle. Uh, it's very easy to say, but hard to implement. So from here, I would like to quickly run through what I did at my family business to start up our e-commerce business. Um, just a quick caution. I only have 30 to 40 minutes to talk today. So I'm going to go lightning fast and skip all the small descriptions on what I did for my uh, cycle. Um, to begin with, my family, uh, my family business is a company, it's a trading company that handles scientific instruments. What we have here are, are machines that cost from 10K to about million dollars. Um, so not suited for just regular B2C e-commerce. 
So what we did have is a small division of our company that handles essential oils and fragrance for aromatherapy and perfumes. Um, all B2B business, so e-commerce was very new to this business as well. Um, this is what our website looks, looks like. Uh, due to the crisis from COVID-19, I did some extensive research on current market trends. And from last year, we started developing a new product line that crosses fragrance and surgical masks. The result was a mask fragrance. Um, so we started to sell the item at around July. Um, our GMV trend looks like this from July, where my mom single-handedly launched a product on Amazon you know, by herself using computers um, before I started getting involved in the actual e-commerce strategy on September, which is this. So my PDCA cycle was around two months span. So you can see that our GMV grew significantly to um, two times uh, compared to September by, by November and over three times by December. So what I did first was, as I said earlier, look at numbers. Um, so I broke down our sales into traffic conversion times AO, uh, AOV, which looks like this. Um, visual graphs are great for understanding numbers at a glance. And from there, I used, uh, I highlighted the points that I thought could be improved and then highlighted them in color, which looks like this. Um, from here, you can see that with each step of the PDCA cycle, I'm going left to right. I'm hypothesizing what the root cause of the problem is. And then I would just list down multiple, not even, um, it, it won't be covered in the, all of them in this page, but um, I would list down all possible actions that I could act on and put them in action. So I will show you a closer look at just uh, my second plan uh, and, you know, uh, from the part of September which made the hugest uh, difference in sales. So shortly put, um, at the September of our new e-commerce business, I found out that our uh, shop had low CVR, low traffic and low AOV, so basically everything. So I'm just going to be introducing to you what I did to improve the, the CVR, the conversion rate. So to improve conversion rate, I wanted to improve both the packaging of the product itself and the product page, which originally looked like this on the left. Um, so clearly uh, the package was not very intriguing. Uh, it was very simple with no imp impact um, and or differentiation with competitive products, very standard. So our competitors were selling at a price at around five to $10 and we were selling at around 40. So we had to uh, fix that. Um, the product page itself was very word heavy and the product images had absolutely no message uh, in its design. So um, starting with the product package, this is what I did. So I worked with my sister who actually currently works for Amazon as a designer. Um, I worked with her to create a vivid product image that characterizes the two main scent used in our mass fragrance, um, rose and citrus. Uh, in addition, we named the product the mask fragrance created by an artisan perfumer. Very catchy and new compared to our competitors. So moving on to our page design, um, this is the design direction I sent to our internal uh, graphic designer. Um, you can look into small details later, but basically each product image that you post on, on any e-commerce site um, should have one single message that helps your customer either understand your product better and or makes your product advantage stand out from other competitors. Um, from this design direction, this was our result. Um, each message was clearly portrayed and reflected into this single sub image. And uh, it helps the customers to visualize how and where they could use the product and what kind of benefit they could get in their life. Uh, this is what the final comparison looks like. Um, very different. Um, as a result, our conversion rate went up over 5% in average. And with the combination of the different improvements I did with traffic and AOV improvements, our sales tripled by December. So just wrapping up, um, this is just one action I took in this half year. And although the reflection cycle was two months long, um, I was carefully managing the listing every week or so to see improvements. Um, as of this year, we are seeing a drop in sales due to increasing competition in the, the mask related uh, market and uh, loss of market needs. So we are taking a huge shift in strategy, which is a totally different story. 
Um, so from that quick case study, um, you might have noticed in the beginning um, that what you sell is as important as to how you sell it. So um, I will show you one strategy on deciding what you should sell and in what category. Um, first off, I would like you to learn the law of Lanchester. Uh, the law of Lanchester is a mathematical formula devised by Frederick uh, Lanchester in 1915 to 1916 during World War I. Um, the formula simply states that when an army fights another army in close range battle of you know, one versus one, um, if the strength of the weapon is the same, the difference between the number of soldiers um, equals uh, the remaining amount of soldiers. So basically, in this case, 10 versus 7, 10 minus 7 equals 3. So you're left with three soldiers. Um, however, in modern warfare, a single airplane or soldier could attack multiple targets at the same time. So it's not as simple. Um, the, the formula is, you know, derivative from a very complex, uh, a lot of calculations. So um, simply put, the number of soldier is squared to calculate casualties. Um, so if there are 10 airplanes fighting seven airplanes, uh, the final result of the formula would be the square root of 100 minus 49, which is the square root of 51, which equals around seven. So a huge difference. Um, a small difference in the number of army basically results in a huge difference in, in modern warfare. Um, so why am I talking about warfare? <laughs> um, the reason why is because the strategy was improved by Bernard Koopman in World War II. And this strategy was applied to business by Nobuo Takaoka in Japan. Um, currently in Japan, it is one of the most used business strategy on how, to, how weak companies could beat strong uh, competitions. Um, this word weak is not referring to the size of the company, but the ranking of uh, the company within the market, market uh, ra the rank of the market share within a single market. So the Lanchester strategy states that you should be aiming for number one market share by a marginal lead of square root of three which is one point, around 1.7 times the second largest competitor. The reason being that if you are too close to the second competitor, um, you would be cutting throat with the competitor through price dropping, aggressive marketing campaigns, et cetera. But, but if you can gain a single market with this much of lead, it'd be very hard for your competitors to enter the market or co compete with you, and you'd be able to fully control co profitability from then on. So how do you determine which market you should be entering? Uh, here's a quick rundown of Koopman and uh, Taikobo Onoda's uh, outline of market, market dominance. Basically, uh, the conclusion is uh, if the biggest player in the market has less than 26% of the market share, it is easy for startups to enter and disrupt the market. But if you find out that there are strong players in the market um, outside of this, uh, do you give up? The answer is no. The Lanchester strategy has few tips on how to penetrate any market as a weaker player. I'm not going to, going to be uh, going into you know different analogies on how this kind of makes sense, but um, I'm just going to jump into the, the general outline. Um, as you can see on the right diagram, um, it is impossible uh, for an army of 10 airplanes to beat. Uh, it is impossible to beat an army of 10 airplanes with seven air airplanes. Um, however, if you can segment their airplanes into a smaller fleet of two, you would be able to dominate the market. So a good example is how HIS, as you're familiar, um, when they started their business, they originally segmented their focus into the tour of Bali um, in, in Indonesia, when all of the tra travel agency were focusing on Hawaii and Guam. Um, after gaining number one share in ba Bali, they moved on to focusing on Cebu and then Phuket. And then um, right now they have been number one in the travel agency uh, since 2005. This is Lanchester's strategy. Um, so the first step in, in the strategy is to segment uh, your, your focus into a smaller market that you could be winning. Um, the second is uh, focusing on all your focus into that single market. And then step three and step four is just additional ways to increase your chances. Um, step three says uh, to create a differentiation factor in your business or products that other companies don't have and hard to mimic. Um, step four is to fight in close range combat instead of multi-front combat. What this means that um, usually in a bigger market, basically there are you know, big corporations that are spending a lot of mass marketing, uh, a lot of uh, 
spending on mass marketing. Um, this type of advertisement is disadvantageous for startups. So try to pick sales or marketing strategy that focuses on a single customer or a small segment within the, the, market, the market that other competitors don't have the time to focus on because they're looking at the bigger picture. Um, finally, after getting market lead in that subsection, move on to your next target. Repeat that and basically you'll be beating all 10 fleets um, in, the, uh, in their army. Lastly, I know there are different ways to calculate and estimate market trends, but um, you only have to care about two things. If that market is uh, that you're going into is growing, and if you can beat uh, the competitors in that subcategories. Um, there's multiple ways, but I'm just gonna show you the two quick uh, ways, the first steps that I use. Um, the easy way to find out the trends of your category is just to use Google Trend as a first reference. Um, obviously, if you have uh, more deeper uh, data with numbers um, using market research companies, uh, those could be very useful as well. Secondly, about competitors, once you figure out which market you're gonna be going into, um, if you want to find competitors in that market, the easiest way is to find, uh, to use the ranking pages by different marketplaces. Um, written are a few steps you can take to narrow down your competitors and what to look for. So if you know what products you're going into, um, after creating your product and product pages, um, you have to go into details on how to improve your product listings and marketing campaigns. What you need to improve on depends on each company's product and current situation. So I'm not going into details on what you can do in what situations due to time constraints. Um, as I said previously, um, what you have to focus on is written in these two diagrams. Um, I'm gonna be uh, simplifying things by uh, focusing on the diagram on the left. So conversion traffic and AOV. Starting with conversion, um, conversion can be broken down into acquisition and retention, basically new customers and existing customers. Um, on e-commerce, product quality is only determined by how your product looks and how well you depict it in your product page. So additional measures you can take uh, to improve your acquisition is things like uh, improving customer feedbacks, improving the FAQ section so you can solve new customers' concerns. Um, there's multiple ways you can do this as well. Uh, retention, on the other hand, uh, is not just relies on actual product quality, which is key, but also by the quality of service. Um, the faster you ship your items, the faster you reply to your customers, uh, the more likely their satisfaction is going to be as customer. And, uh, you know, other things you can do just as idea would be uh, some companies include handwritten letters in each shipment to show love to their customers or some add un unexpected freebies to their uh, packing list. So, you know, uh, as a sign of gratitude for choosing their stores, um, you know, there are multiple ways to, you know, you know, create core fans to your shops, but um, all of that probably could be learned by a lot of websites. Um, now going into traffic, um, marketing strategy becomes a lot more difficult, but in order to increase traffic, the single strongest way to increase traffic uh, is to optimize keywords. Um, use Google search or marketplace search um, bars to figure out related keywords, example. Make sure you put them in all your product descriptions, uh, your key images. Um, as mentioned pr briefly earlier, um, advertisement is the key to uh, giving a jump start to your sales. But if used properly, advertisements can also be used to expand your market share. So, um, Advertisement, in my opinion, it's a double-edged sword. So knowing which advertisement investment have the highest return um, is very crucial. Um, a little bit of note, because I hear this question all the time um, about social media and influencers. Um, I know a lot of uh, success cases where um, each one of these worked, but generally speaking, um, social media, in order to uh, succeed in a social media campaign, um, you have to bundle that with the sophisticated content and mixed marketing. Um, meaning, basically, it takes a lot of time and resource to plan properly. So for starters in e-commerce, I would not recommend uh, social media. Um, influencers, uh, in my opinion, they're usually overpriced. So um, this is more recommended for a small bump of sales if you have nothing else to do. 
or for uh, big corporations that have gotten all of the basic marketing strategy down, then influencers may be a huge uh, difference. But um, likely social media and influencers, I would usually not recommend for a regular e-commerce company. Um, finally, about AOV. Um, Average order value, um, this is a little bit hard to grow because it kind of depends on uh, the customer's behaviors. Um, but a few ways uh, people do grow their AOV is, you know, the first easy one would be um, creating bundles. Uh, the second one, uh, making multi-layered grades on your product so that you can upsell your products. And then I think the strongest tool out of all to uh, you know, increase your AOV is to make sure your shoppers look at your other products in your store for an impulse buy. Um, this is it for AOV. I'm not going into details because the, um, this goes into product design and uh, shop design. But one final note on improving your sales as a well, whole um, is to mimic companies that are succeeding in different industries. There are multiple companies who already succeeded in their e-commerce store and you can use them as your case study. Learn from them and apply them to your product. Um, as I mentioned in the PDCA cycle, uh, the key is not to find a single strategy that can uh, increase your sales, is to quickly act and reflect on multiple strategies that might work. Some might not, but each success piled on top of each other in the end would lead to a bigger sales. Um, so finally, last but not least, I'm going to introduce you uh, the two biggest marketplaces in Japan that companies in Hawaii could consider. Um, why am I introducing marketplaces instead of, you know, like a, your own website to sell your items? The simple um, answer would be it's cheaper and it's more effective. In the real world, most people who are shopping uh, goes into department stores, shopping malls or supermarkets to find your products, right? To find what they're looking for. So they don't go around, you know, town driving down to find an unknown brand or shops unless they really have you know stumbled upon it by chance or they were really looking for a very niche product that can found, be found nowhere else so like similar to that in e-commerce um creating your own website means that you know you also have to think about website branding google seo and so on so unless what you sell is very unique or you're thinking of a unique business plan or a sales technique that can't be replicated in a marketplace my recommendation I'd say the shortcut to sales is to start at a location where everyone everyone is already shopping. Um, with that said, uh, Amazon and Rakuten are the two biggest e-commerce players in the Japanese market. Um, both have very different layouts and customer experiences. Um, selling to Amazon is very similar to having your products placed on the shelves of a countrywide supermarket. So uh, you can kind of visualize this. Uh, your products is placed right next to your competitors. You know, you can compare the prices very easily. Um, and basically the only way you can sell to your customers um, is outside of the supermarket uh, or uh, through your main image and basically base, basic description um, from packaging, um, which is the sole differentiation factor with competitive products um, in a supermarket. Um, on the contrary, Rakuten is commonly compared to having your own storefront within a big, uh, gigantic shopping mall. What the difference is, is each brand or store is in charge of building up your own store and product pages. So basically you have control over um, how your shop look like, looks like and you know, how your products are displayed. But you know, on the other hand, you're also in charge of just setting all of that yourself. Um, Amazon's total GMB in Japan is estimated to be over um, 3 tr trillion yen um, according to their IR documents. So this includes, includes uh, prime membership fees in AWS. Um, due to Amazon's secrecy in their documents, it's hard to precisely state their e-commerce GMP, but according to multiple sources, their EC sales is estimated to be around 2 trillion yen at the moment, um, including their own direct sales. So um, naturally, Rakuten would be the biggest marketplace that you can uh, penetrate, uh, you can enter in Japan at the moment with over three, 3 trillion yen just from uh, the e-commerce sales. Um, the shop count, however, is very different. Um, Amazon is significantly bigger in terms of shop count compared to Rakuten. 
Um, the reason why is because Rakuten is very selective um, in their business model, and Rakuten has a very high uh, entrance fee. So that's why Rakuten only has a shop of uh, a shop count of around 50k, whereas Amazon has 178,000 sellers. So this is a comparison between the search pages. Um, in single glance, the search pages of each marketplace is similar. But when you look closer, there are a few significant differences. Um, to begin with, Amazon utilizes universal product pages. Uh, what this means is that one SKU from man one manufacturer has one dedicated page. Um, therefore, if multiple sellers were about to sell the same item, they are congregated into one page and the price would be the main deciding factor for customers on which seller to buy from. Um, on the other hand, Rakuten has um, one product page for each listing. So a single SKU may have different pages by different sellers. Uh, price is still the main driver of sales in Rakuten, but the presentation of the product is as important as the price itself. <clears throat> um, going into thumbnails, um, Amazon's thumbnails are generally white background, um, whereas a lot of Rakuten's uh, main image, product image is visually drawing but a little bit complicated and hard to see. Um, with other small differences in the search result, just as a summary, um, Amazon is considered clean and easy to find products. However, most people are buying things that they are already looking for in the search bar in Amazon. On the other hand, Rakuten's a visually kind of, you know, in your face kind of approach um, makes your pages harder to see. So basically people who are um, searching for items at Rakuten forces them to search for what they are looking for. So naturally, people are kind of like window shopping. So people who shop on Rakuten um, have a tendency to impulse buy. Um, in addition, since Amazon has a very strict policy in shipping, generally Amazon is considered very fast, right? Um, so it's a go-to spot for buy essential things that they need right away. Rakuten uh, shipping is reliant on each shops. So customers are more for kind of like enjoyment, entertainment shopping. So people have less ex expectations on fast delivery compared to Amazon. Um, this could be both beneficial for sellers because uh, you know people are buying multiple items by impulse, but at the same time, vice versa, that is the, the weakest point of Rakuten compared to Amazon in terms of uh, competition. So going into product pages, um, this is an example of a basic product page on Amazon. Um, I think you're familiar with Amazon, so I'm not going into details. But as you can see, the customer experience is very smooth, and the keyword is unified. Um, below, you can see that the basic descriptions are, um, you know, under the basic descriptions, you're, you also see recommendation by Amazon of similar products by actually different sellers. So some of these can be controlled by adding customization within the, the, um, the further descriptions, but Amazon basically has control over what other items that uh, your customers are seeing. Um, because Amazon puts a heavy focus on customer experience and conver conversion as a customer over individual seller sales. Um, Rakuten, Rakuten takes a very different approach. Uh, this is a listing of the same exact product by the same seller on Rakuten. Um, you can see that the actual uh, product page is constructed by a very long uh, scrolling page from top to bottom with very detailed description and um, visual images that represent the product. What this means that users are kind of forced to you know, scroll through all of these images to get to the add to cart button. Um, this means that um, a lot of Rakuten's customers, um, if they get tired of you know, the first looks of your product page without even seeing the buy button, they could you know, go out and start looking at other products. But at the same time, um, Rakuten's approach allows the customers to actually visualize what your products are and see in description what your products could mean. Um, and they're kind of forced to do it. So that's um, basically the merit um, the advantage of using Rakuten is you're able to brand yourself. Um, the disadvantage is all content is created by the seller themselves. So basically, um, shops have to you know con control, but at the same time have the obligation to upselling their products. 
Um, here, you know, there's very, there's a lot of differences between Amazon and Rakuten. You can see this table later in details, but here's a quick table of the pros and cons that I think are important um, of comparing Amazon and Rakuten. Um, as you can see, Amazon is very easy to set up and mainly runs itself after listing your products. So very low maintenance. Um, the only control you have, however, is the product listing itself and improving uh, keywords and images. So tweaking your, um, and in terms of marketing, the only thing you can do is basically keyword advertisements. So, um, which also has very limited uh, capability on Amazon because Amazon uses their own algorithm to uh, kind of match which keyword um, your which which keyword should be shown to which products. So Amazon has basically all of the controls. Um, as of promotions, uh, as you know, Amazon heavily focuses on Prime Day and Black Friday. Um, on these days, shops could join the campaign through heavy discounts, but most of the promotional activity is done by Amazon themselves. Um, unless you have a very high presence in Amazon Japan and they want to work with you on a specific product, and there isn't much you can do outside of increasing advertising spending during Prime Day and Black Friday or working on a discount and also working on conversion to increase your sales. Um, on the other hand, uh, Rakuten has full flexibility in product listing and shop pages, which also means that you're um, expected to put in significant effort in your product image design and shop page itself. Uh, promotion, uh, compared to Amazon, is very controllable at Rakuten. And on top of normal CPC ads, uh, there are different advertisement menus, including coupon ads, display ads, uh, campaign ads, email ads, etc. Um, one very interesting thing about Rakuten is because in Japan, Japanese uh, people tend to uh, connect shopping with seasonal events. For example, Valentine's is a huge gifting season for couples in Japan. Christmas, similarly, it's a kind of a couples event in Japan for some reason. Um, Halloween, it's also a shopping season for costumes, um, not for kids, but for adults, um, things like that. So basically, Rakuten allows shops to almost fully control how and where your products are shown, which also equates to more resources and burden on the sellers to succeed. Um, the one uh, final and biggest difference between Amazon and Rakuten, I believe, is shop support. 90% um, of Amazon's support relies on their call center for just technical support, nothing about strategy. Rakuten, on the other hand, um, Rakuten's biggest advantage over Rakt Amazon <clears throat> is that one uh, designated e-commerce consultant like myself is assigned to each store. So they would be the expert that guides you through uh, different categories and strategies on how you should improve shop sales and also be, be proposing you different promotional plans and advertisement that you should be engaging in to increase your sales. Um, just as a side note, Amazon actually started to launch an Amazon consulting service recently uh, with about $1.5K, $1,500 per month. Uh, it's kind of expensive. Um, however, their support is mainly on keyword improvements, guiding through brand registration and introduction to um, exclusive events and campaigns outside of Black Friday and Prime Day. Um, it's effective for merchants who already has a good record on Amazon, but um, I believe if you're going to be spending that much on consulting, might as well go for active. Uh, shortly put, um, Amazon is recommended for brands and stores who already have brand recognition in the Japanese market and want to increase their B2B, B2C sales in Japan, or for stores that have strong confidence in beating uh, current uh, competitors in the market by just product image and price. Also, because Amazon is so cheap and easy to set up, it is suitable for test marketing. Um, on the other hand, Rakuten is recommended for stores who are dedicated to put in the effort to uh, increase brand awareness in Japan and want a consultant inside Rakuten to oversee your e-commerce strategy. Um, the reason why my own family business chose Amazon to start off our e-commerce business is because we knew that there were uh, limited competitors in the mask fragrance category, so we knew that we could win that in that category. And we knew that we didn't have enough resource to fully operate and ship at the size of GMB expected at Rakuten. 
So right now we're uh, preparing to launch for Racton by uh, adding product listing outside of these categories um, to increase enough SKU counts to set up a full store instead of just a couple product lines. And also uh, we're right now preparing to push everything into FBA, which is the Amazon warehouse um, as a prop preparation for the operation to be able to cover Racton uh, sales. Um, finally, uh, I mentioned uh, opening a shop in Racton is a little bit difficult, not just because of price, but also because we have a lot of restrictions on who could enter uh, the Japan market. Um, so basically, um, you are required at Rakuten to have a Japanese fluent staff um, in charge of creating content and uh, covering customer service. Or the second option is you would have to outsource these uh, operations like creating pages and um, covering customer service by a uh, service partner. So um, if you're able to cover either of these, um, you, you'd be going into application, um, screening, and then contract. So this is a very long process compared to Amazon where you can just uh, set up a store in the US for amazon.com and then checking off the global shipping uh, option. Um, this is my final page. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I went through a lot about strategy. Uh, I didn't go into details because I knew that it won't be relevant to everyone. Um, I hope that I helped you a little bit, um, but I'll be happy to answer any questions individually um, if you want to reach out to me. My company as a trading company is also open to helping as well um, if you need professional consulting or advices on actual import to Japan. Um, if you want to learn more about Rakuten, my close colleague of mine, um, this is my wedding picture, he came to my wedding. <laughs> um, he still works at Rack 10 in Silicon Valley. So if you need to reach out to him directly, please go ahead. If you want my introduction, um, just shoot a quick email to myself. Um, that's it. So thank you so much for listening. All right, thank you very much, Sakumi-san. So I have a couple of questions already coming up. So uh, the anonymous attendance, uh, he said, or she said, oh, I am a startup in Hawaii in the agro business. How do I open a shop in Iraq then? Please advise. I think you said it's pretty difficult, but then what could be, I mean, I, I assume a lot of Hawaii businesses, they don't even have any Japanese speaker or they don't have, they don't even know what's going on in Japan. Like what mm -hmm. is, I know that the process will be complicated, but the what mm -hmm. is the best way to actually start from? To open okay. up yeah. Um, in terms of agriculture, um, I think you're in the business. I think you might know. Um, importing agriculture in Japan is a little bit difficult because of uh, uh, restrictions in uh, importing agricultural goods. Um, if you're talking about processed goods, it might be simpler. Um, there might be no restriction to uh, selling things that have no expiration dates. But agriculture itself uh, is a little bit of a longer process, like dirt, soils, plants. Um, where you should start is start Googling import laws into Japan. Um, since selling in Rakuten and Amazon is basically considered personal import. So customers are directly buying from US or any uh, countries overseas directly. So most of the customs and duties and import uh, restrictions and certification is uh, not required to sell in Japan. But um, in order to start selling, basically you should you know, make sure that you have no uh, restricted materials in your products, and then uh, reach out to a Rakuten consultant or, you know, a person like myself or Alec, or um, reach out to Rakuten um, through rakuten.co.jp um, in order to find out uh, more info. Basically, we're very happy to help anyone. We do have a strong team of Rakuten employees, not call centers. So that's one way to go for it. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah, and I think he said he's in a cashew business. It's going to be the same, right? Because it's still food and you, you needed to make sure that that's okay to sell in Japan. Yep. Okay. Also, so I think you already answered some question here that Joma uh, uh, asked this question. What mm -hmm. are typical fees to hire professionals to help us open a Rakuten shop? Can mm -hmm. we get some recommended Rakuten consultant company, please? I think... Uh, hmm. Alec might be a good to contact with, or is there any outsourcing yeah. company? Um, 
if you if you've ever talked with people from Japan, <laughs> um, generally the English speaking population is very limited in Japan. Um, I know there are a couple uh, companies that Rakuten itself uh, partners with um, in order to uh, for cross border. Um, so you can reach out to Alec uh, for more information for introduction. Um, people like myself, like a uh, private consultants um, that can also speak to English is very rare. Yeah. And the, the biggest uh, consulting companies in Japan or Rakuten is fully Japanese. So that is not a very uh, realistic, I think, approach. So yeah. I think talking to Alec or, or myself would be an easiest way. I could, uh, if you can uh, shoot me an email after this uh, seminar, I could introduce you to Alec. Um, so you can uh, get more information from him. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so uh, the question from Mike, based on your presentation, assumes that a Benji's success is depending on the dynamic marketing strategy and the designers who are creative and understand the product and the intended, intended markets. So mm -hmm. I think he, he mentioned like what he thinks, but that's kind of right. I mean, so my question about this is, so you talk mm -hmm. about the strategies and then like, is it general regardless what kind of, access yeah. point where they go? Uh, they go. Um, yes, uh, what I uh, show to you um, in this slide is, you know, ba the basic strategy that you learn when you start working for Rakuten on ear number one. <laughs> so everything I covered is very, very uh, general. Um, in terms of what you actually have to do is understanding your products. I think, uh, you know, it, in the world of EC, how to sell, um, can be generalized, but um, if you go into details, you have to understand your products. Um, I think it's the same in any business, not just e-commerce. You know, even in real stores, you have to know your products to sell it. Um, in terms of uh, you know dynamic marketing plans, um, I don't think it's that difficult. I personally think, um, at least in e-commerce, um, the basic you know strategies could be you know Googled in this time of age anywhere. Um, keywords and different tools are available online to research what kind of keyword you should be putting in for, you know, your, your specific product. So I think all of this is just, uh, you know, just mundane, you know, kind of work. But um, as you, as long as you have a strong strategy on the outside as a framework, um, naturally you would start, you know, figuring out what kind of things you can do to improve. And all of that can could come from experience. So um, the shortcut is to use a consultant because they've gone through multiple cases of e-commerce and you know led them to su success. But um, personally, I think anyone could do it themselves if you input enough effort and time to it. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, you did. So you you needed those strategy, also the good product, understand the product. I mean, the product yep. in Japan before you actually studying EC. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of we were uh, we were uh, kind of telling through a whole of this webinars, I think. Yeah, and okay. so I really like the P um, PDSD plan that you mentioned, and then mm -hmm. I think um, you know those are a lot of mom and pop shops here listening to your webinar right now. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then like um, so sorry sorry I, I disrupt the other question, but anyway. So what is the best way for them to start planning? When I'm saying that starting planning, you mentioned about the numbers, mm -hmm. right? And then I, I right. know that you're experts of those looking at the numbers. I think a lot of people <laughs> here are not necessarily like that. What right, that makes sense. Start to, to look for the numbers. Um, okay. Uh, let me uh, kind of flip through my slides so I can kind of show you. Uh, so... PDCA cycle, I think uh, Takaho is talking about the first planning, right? Um, you don't have any numbers to begin with. Um, same here. Um, my mom uh, kind of made a product listing after she created the, the e-commerce business. Um, she had no numbers to start with. That's why the GMV at the first two months was very low. Um, where you start with is just basically, you know, make sure you have an intriguing enough uh, product list, product page, that's conversion. 
Um, you have enough advertisement, you know, you have to jumpstart advertisement, you know, maybe just even $10 uh, per day for a CPC ad, which is uh, search word ads. Um, that would be enough to give you the first batch of numbers to begin with. From there, um, for example, in Amazon, um, the numbers are actually in the portal. So you'd be able to check these traffic conversion and AOV within the tool that Amazon or Rakuten provides. So you could deep dive from there. Um, Rakuten actually has very extensive number and analysis within the, the system itself. So um, you have details into what kind of numbers you should need and what kind of things you should be focusing on uh, to improve your GMV. Um, but just in general, these three numbers are covered by Amazon and Rakuten. So that's where you can start kind of figuring out um, what you should be focusing on. Um, you know, an improvement itself, you know, you're just listing out things that you could improve on. So you don't even need to know if the numbers are low or high. You just have to know that you're trying to focus on one improvement and see if that improvement succeeded or not by seeing if the numbers improved or not. Great, thank you. So yep. tell me, uh, ask, are you in Japan or Hawaii? <laughs> I'm currently based in Japan, but I do uh, go to California, New York for multiple business trips. So I'm flying all over because I'm a, uh, I'm a trading company. I work with the U.S., but I am based in Japan. Okay, great. Thank you. And then uh, Mike was sharing the question of the information with stuff for somebody. And yeah, great. And I have a minute. And then so... I have other questions. So, um, sure. okay, so I think, so overall the business in Hawaii, they have a disadvantage for the shipping costs and the shipping yep. uh, time. Absolutely. So, yeah, and in that case, which would you recommend to start with, Rakuten or Amazon? Like, and then those, let's say mm. the, those people are not necessarily have a strong awareness in, in, Jap in Japan market. Right. Um, so it's the same in Japan, right? Um, Japanese manufacturers are competing with Chinese manufacturers because of the, the cost of production and you know, factory management. Um, so similarly, price, um, I didn't include it in the slide, but there's a one, one huge slide that explains why customers buy items. So um, the question is, for example, if you were trying to buy like um, a coffee um, today, and you can buy this coffee um, at $1.50 in a vending machine. And also you can find the same, this same product, you know, sold maybe under $1 if you find, you know, this coffee at a discount store. But, you know, where do people buy from? Um, the, most of the sales from drinks are coming from vending machines in Japan. Why? Because it's convenient, right? Um, so even if you're, you have a similar product, um, price is not, the, the, the only factor that plays into, you know, buying your products. Maybe it's customer service. Maybe it's, you know, how you market yourself. Maybe if your product, um, product page looks, you know, very intriguing compared to other sellers, you know, in the same marketplace, uh, you know, uh, very little descriptions on your product pages, you could still be winning them even if you're losing in prices. So I personally think that, um, the, the ability to create um, an intriguing, uh, you know, an attractive product page is more important than, you know, what price your, your product is sold in. So um, I don't think there's a disadvantage there in terms of um, products from Hawaii, because um, you could basically say if you're from Hawaii, that's one di um, differentiation factor you already have compared to Japanese markets. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that anything in Hawaii would would sell is because that's not true. Um, people, if they have, if you persuade them that Hawaiian products are more attractive than local Japanese products, mm -hmm. then you can sell that item even if it's uh, more expensive than domestic products. So depending yeah. on the story that you share and the description and how you can differentiate your product from, uh, from exactly. other exactly. competitors. In that case, maybe Rakuten is better, right? Because you can actually, mm. Get a more story oh. or put the other images and then you can create mm -hmm. uh, the brand awareness on the product. Uh, yeah, yes and no, because you can technically do that on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, you just have less control over it. Um, so if you're trying to sell 
like a whole brand or store, then you're kind of leaning towards Rakuten. Um, if you have one single product line that you know is very attractive that you can sell, like myself, um, Amazon is a quicker choice. Um, either way, you're investing time into creating the product images, um, asking designers to create the, those pages for you. So um, I don't think there's a huge difference uh, between, uh, I can't really say if Amazon is better for you or if Rakuten is better for you. I personally love Rakuten because um, that's where I grew up and I you know, learned all of these e-commerce strategies myself at Rakuten. But if I was to start a new business and I didn't have any knowledge on EC, Rakuten would probably help you in, in learning those things than Amazon. But um, at the end of these, at the end of the line, it's, it's your choice. Right? Amazon is definitely cheaper and easier to set up. <laughs> you can try to do it. And if there's a more, you can switch to Rakuten and, you know, true, get true. Them from them too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's an option. Yeah, at least you, when you start Amazon, you can have some numbers. To another step, that. that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, Mike was sharing his thought. Thank you so much. And then, um, so I have uh, three minutes. So now I have another question because I think this is very important to Hawaii people. So you were talking about okay. advertisement, right? Advertisement. Yep. And then, um, so, and you said um, the huge uh, influencer in the social media is sometimes overpriced or. Uh, over over too much to make a thought. And then um, that's something really Hawaii company really own for advertisement, especially social media. Mm -hmm. um, to, so what is the other options of the advertisement for advertisement hmm. for the small businesses in Hawaii to access those Jap Japanese com uh, companies, uh, consumers? Right. Um. If you're talking in general, I think the cheapest uh, advertisement out there is uh, Google Ads. Um, listing, you know, your products in advertisement through search ads is probably the cheapest in any marketplace, any websites. Mm -hmm. um, the second option, uh, I think, would be email campaigns is cheap. It's a little bit hard to implement because you have to be uh, very versed in email marketing. Mm. Um, those are, I think, the two options generally. Um, on the other hand, uh, in a marketplace, on, uh, on Amazon, you have only two options. You have the search word ads, that, um, and you should definitely be investing in this because um, it's very cost effective. And the second one is uh, having your brand uh, registered on Amazon. And then there's a thing called a sponsored brand ads. Um, it's more a display ad uh, within the search. Um, that's also an option. Um, in terms of Rakuten, um, don't worry about what advertisement you should be investing on because uh, basically the consultants themselves are very versed in selling their advertisement. It's part of their KPI. So um, the KPI of an e-commerce uh, e consultant in Japan is GMV and advertisement in Japan. So Basically, in order for you to succeed and in order for the consultants themselves to succeed, they want you to, you know, grow your business so you, their GMV is higher and also to start investing more into advertisement so they have more profit from each shops. Um, it's a win-win kind of relationship. If that makes sense. You can learn from them too, right? You can. Yeah, you can learn from them. Um, they have numbers as well. Um, which is a huge difference in Amazon. Um, Amazon won't show you your conversions, um, investing into different advertisements, but Rakuten uh, can't give you the actual numbers, but can recommend you the highest return rate um, advertisements available at the moment. Interesting. So maybe for the people who has no idea what's going on with EC Japan and they don't know how to build, maybe mm -hmm. even if Rakuten is a little bit more expensive, if you have enough capability to, to, to commit, maybe yep. it's easier, for also the learning process is better. Yeah, that, that's my opinion, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's all uh, about time. And then Nicole, I think you want to close that? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Takaho and Takumi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Takumi. No problem, thank you. So everyone, before we wrap up, a quick reminder that the webinar has been recorded and it will be shared via email for everyone who registered. 
And the next webinar in our e-commerce and digital marketing series will be Getting Started with Shopify Marketing, featuring guest speaker Chris Snyder from Shopify Spaces. To register for this and our other e-commerce webinars, please go to hgdc.org slash e-commerce. And you can also view our um, past webinars at that link as well. And thank you for joining us today. And if you're interested in services from Innovate Hawaii, please feel free to reach out to me. So mahalo everyone. Thank you. Thank you.